describes a number. It's the same as saying you have a dozen eggs or you're buying a ream of paper, 500 pieces of paper. It's just another way of describing Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now 10 to the 23rd, unless you really give it some thought, there's no way you can really comprehend how big that number is. Okay, also if you had fine grains of sand and you took Avogadro's number of grains of sand, that would cover the state of Texas 50 foot deep. 50 foot deep sand, the state of Texas. It's beyond imagination. So as soon as you figure out that you really can't comprehend how big it is, I certainly can't, uh, it's helpful to get some insight as to how small an atom is, along with how large Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is. Let's take a look at what could be a typical square out of the periodic table. For carbon, you've got the chemical symbol, which can be one or two letters. You've got the atomic number, the number of protons. The mass number, which is the average number of protons and neutrons that occur naturally. Isotopes have in common that they have the same number of protons, so they're the same element, but they have differing number of neutrons, so their weight is different. Okay, so you get it. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. Atoms, molecules, we're talking about that kind of stuff. But what's the point? Okay, here's the deal. This is what, what is cool about the periodic table, is that mass number Say uh, I was using carbon as carbon-12, using that on purposely because that carbon-12 was chosen as the standard to base the periodic table on, okay? A bunch of chemists got together, I'm supposing somewhere really nice on an island, and they all had drinks with uh, little umbrellas on them, but at any rate, they decided at some point in the past that they would take carbon-12, Okay, six protons, six neutrons, that isotope of carbon. Okay, we talked about that mass number being a, a average of what the naturally occurring isotopes of any element would be. In this case, we have carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. Okay, but they chose carbon-12 as the standard. Okay, they said we're going to take exactly 12 grams of carbon-12 and somehow figure out how many atoms that would be. The answer to that, how many atoms are in 12 grams of carbon-12, was 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's where that comes from, okay? So you're taking something that's really common, carbon-12, and you're basing everything else in the periodic table on that, okay? so along with there being 12 grams of carbon-12, and this is where you get the neat connection between you're talking about something, you can say there's 12 atomic mass units of carbon-12 in one atom, but you can turn around and use that same mass number of, of 12 for that isotope as how many grams you can measure out. Okay, a gram is about a paper clip worth of mass, okay? So something you can measure out on a regular scale, and this has a connection to the atomic level, which when you think about how small atoms have to be with the whole 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd thing, that's a remarkable thing, okay? So we've got this connection between the subatomic particles atomic mass units about the mass of one proton or neutron and take that up to the macro scale something that we can work with grams okay so everything on the periodic table from that mass number and this is always going to be the larger number of the two the the nice even number how the periodic table is uh, organized from left to right like you read and going down like you read that's the atomic number okay okay going uh, one through whatever, going left to right. And the typically the odd number with the decimals involved is the mass number. Uh, 
you know, for the smaller elements, about twice of what the uh, number of protons is. But that's the protons and the neutrons together is the mass number. Let's take atomic mass or atomic weight. Mass or weight of one atom is measured in atomic mass units. The mass of a mole of these atoms would be in grams per mole. Let's look at an example of atomic weight or atomic mass. We could take perhaps, oh say sodium. Look on the periodic table, it's about 23 grams per mole, which means one atom would be 23 atomic mass units per atom. You could take chlorine the same way, 35 and a half grams per mole or atomic mass units per atom. Oxygen 16, carbon 12. Okay, usually when you're talking molecular weight, okay, more properly, probably you'll have it referred to as molecular mass, okay, grams being mass. Uh, we could get into the mass weight thing, but that's okay. Use it. We use it interchangeably pretty much. Mass and weight uh, would be referred to as the same thing. So molecular, I'll say molecular mass. Okay. That would be referring to, some, to a molecule which would be something covalently bonded. So that would be like water, H2O. That would be like carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay. As opposed to the ubiquitous example of an ionic compound, which would be sodium chloride, or I used, I'm using sodium oxide as an example of an ionically bonded compound. So there's formula weights for ionic compounds because it's not a molecule. When you get into the structure of an ionic compound, there isn't really one sodium that hooks up with one other chloride and make a happy little couple there. They're going to be attracted in three dimensions to sodium to other chlorides and vice versa. Whereas you can refer to a water molecule as one specific bonded unit. So that's a molecule. An ionic formula unit Okay, would be one sodium with one chloride, but we just use that as, con as a convenient one-to-one -one ratio. There's one sodium, one chloride. If it's sodium oxide, it's two sodium, one oxide, one oxygen. Okay, so that's a distinction between molecules or molecular weight, ionic compounds being referred to as formula units or formula weight. So just like we were talking about the mass of an atom, a molecule, something that's bonded covalently, would be weighed or massed in atomic mass units. And the molar mass or weight of one mole of these would also be in grams per mole. So again, using that dichotomy of atomic mass units being the same as grams, take carbon dioxide you're getting 1 times 12 for the carbon, you're getting 2 times 16 for the oxygen. Add them up, you've got 44 grams per mole, or it'd be 44 atomic mass units for a molecule. Now for formula mass or formula weight. Again, these are ionically bonded formula units. Formula mass, say, of sodium oxide, an ionic compound. You've got 2 times 23 for the sodium, 1 times 16 for the oxygen. A total of 62 grams per mole or atomic mass units. At any rate, I hope you come out seeing that the mole, just being a number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, I hope you see a little bit where that comes from and how it really is profoundly useful when you couple that whole concept of the mole with the periodic table.